Hello everybody, I am Vedant and welcome back to another YouTube video on my channel. <laughs> um, so I have been, you know, I've been very uh, lazy about my YouTube since few months or weeks. Um, but I'm back now and um, I've been receiving a lot of questions about the MyTax internship program. Um, I know a lot of you are applying, the applications are open. Uh, it's a great program to be part of, um, right though you come from, you know, any college in India or anywhere else, um, you can dream about this program. Um, and I understand that the process can be a bit that complicated um, with, with the applications, the interviews, the selection of projects, uh, and more, more, I am I'm sure, but more, of, more than that. So um, this video is going to be about me answering those questions for you. Um, so keep posting the questions in the um, chats in the live chat and I can take a bit from there and help you around. Now um, I did receive some general questions on my DM which I would like to take first. I mean those are FAQs probably those uh, fans of those uh, most of your questions are answered. Uh, also I would like to give you some tips on what I think is important. So um, the first tip would be around uh, the selection of budget which is the most important thing because I've seen this as the most deciding factor of people going to Canada for my tax internship program and not. Um, so what happens is, I, I hope everything is visible, uh, like um, I am audible properly. Uh, so what happens is, um, suppose let's take, there are a lot of projects you can select, right? Um, like seven projects out of pool of projects that you can select. Now what happens is people do uh, select projects that are highly ambitious, for example, let's say uh, you are working on biotechnology and say the best school for biotechnology is University of Toronto. And there is a person, there is a professor who does a great research in the same area that you want to work on. Um, so, and, and the professor is also great. So what happens is a lot of people apply to that professor and the professor has just one or two positions for that project. Now, that re reduces your chance of acceptance drastically because, well, a lot of people applying to it just for two positions, that means a very less chance of getting selection. So that's why what I suggest people to do is balance your selection of project in a way that you also apply to projects which are which you think not a lot, not a lot of people will apply to, but it's at the same time something of your interest. Now, um, I mean, here, all the universities, although they do have some rank, ranking in order, but all the universities are great. Uh, the ecosystem is great. The professors are great. Uh, in fact, professors keep transferring from one university to other, irrespective of whatever the rank of that university is. So uh, the university really doesn't matter. What matters is what you're interested in. So don't filter out the university based on the rankings. Uh, there can be some preference but mostly go for the project. This should be most important. Go for the project that you think less people would apply to and it is something of your niche. Uh, that way you have great chances of getting accepted because then probably then your application will be even seen. Because I've heard last year, there was a project by University of Toronto in machine learning, which got around 500 applications <laughs> just for two positions. So can, can you imagine uh, how difficult that's gonna be. So the applications were not even looked at. Um, probably the professor did some random selection of application or just went for some, um, just GPA to filter the application out and then went into details. Um, or maybe just did, uh, just went for, you know, uh, top colleges, selected students from top colleges and then uh, went into details of the application and so on. So make sure you select your projects properly. Um, and that's the most important tip that I wanted to give. Now, let's take your question. So um, the first question is by Pratik. I want to join DRDO. Is, the in is this internship helpful for me? How can I join DRDO with the help of this internship? All right, so uh, DRDO is also a research organization, right? So any research experience should be helpful to you uh, to get into any other research organization. Um, and I believe getting an international exposure uh, should be of great benefit. Uh, when I completed my tax internship and posted about it on my LinkedIn, 
I received a lot of job offers in my LinkedIn directly from the uh, companies uh, in my DM, uh, even though I didn't apply to them. Um, so I think it's, it's, uh, this is a great internship. Everyone knows about it. And it can be a, a great benefit to you uh, to get any prospective jobs in the future. Say something on project selection um, followed by interview prep experience. Okay, so I did tell you about project selection. If you have any other specific question about project selection, then please put it in the chat. Um, otherwise, interview and prep. Okay, so um, so the first first process is your application. Then your application is reviewed by the MyTax team. So that's the phase one of your application. Uh, to check whether you meet the eligibility, uh, whether you filled the application properly or not. So that's just, um, you know, I would say, uh, force level, like a primer screening, uh, which doesn't involve a lot of uh, uh, selection factors, just whether your application is complete and whether you're eligible. Once that is done, your project, uh, like your application is sent to all the uh, professors that you applied to. Maybe all, may not be all, because uh, the pr application process of my tax is not revealed. It's it's uh, a secret <laughs> and um, it's a mystery and my text doesn't like reveal it. So, um, so you, then your application goes to the professors and then they call you for interviews. Um, so interview will be like expect call for interviews around November. Um, in the interview, they'll, it will be very basic interview to discuss just about your application. So feel free, you know, just discuss normally like how you have a conversation. And um, Canadians are great. They'll make you uh, feel very comfortable. Um, it won't be like a very harsh interview or something. Uh, they won't bombard with you uh, with a lot of questions. In fact, even if you don't know anything, they'll be very generous with you uh, and very make you feel very comfortable. So just have a conversation. If you don't know anything, be you know, um, just be comfortable about it and say, I don't. I'm at this point. I'm not aware of this, but if I get selected, I, I think I have three to four months to learn more skills. And I, I promise that I can learn uh, that. Or, I mean, these things will make them comfortable about you, that you are uh, generous, you are passionate about um, the the program. All right. um, could you repeat what section? Uh, what section? Uh, sorry, I didn't get your question. Um, maybe ask in details again. Hey, selecting multiple projects with same professor is quite risky, right? Yeah, why do you want to, uh, you know, um, reduce your chances? Because, um, so what can happen is if a professor is reviewing your application for a certain project, and if it if they think that you are uh, more, you know, uh, able to complete some other project by the same professor, they might directly ask you to, uh, you know, switch to the other project mm -hmm. without you without you being applying to both the projects. So uh, don't apply to the uh, multiple projects by the same professor, rather apply to, you know, um, different project by different professors so that you have more chances of getting accepted. Should we use MyTag CV template or can we use our own? I would suggest not to use MyTag CV template because just imagine a lot of people using the same template and it, be it being monotonous for the reviewer to see the same thing again and again, like the same format. And I'm, I, I'm being honest, it's it's boring. <laughs> so um, maybe if you create your own template, which can be pleasing to eyes, uh, that might help uh, because that way you stand out of the crowd. Um, but but even if you create your own template, do includes all the sections that are there in the my tax template. So that might help you, uh, you know, cover all the information. Um, and that's what I did. So I used my own um, CV, not the my tax template. Again, um, with, with CV, so um, the CVs in academia or research doesn't have a page limit. So you can go for any number of pages, right? So don't restrict yourself. Add everything that you did. So my CV has like um, what I want to do, uh, like the goals, the experience, the education, the publications, uh, the talks that I delivered, the awards that I've got, um, the media press uh, articles that I have about me um, and a lot of stuff. So don't restrict yourself. And my CV was like four page. Um, so just, you know, uh, go for it. Okay. So the next question is, I would not be able to submit the university transcripts. My first year results are not yet not announced. I'm in second year. I'm, I'm only 
I only have my high school card. Would I be able to apply for it? This might be difficult. Um, okay, wait. You are in second year. Is your program like a um, three year program? Because you can only apply to uh, my tax if you are in your third year. Um, like if you if you are in your last second year. Um, did I in in the in the pen ultimate year? So if if it's a four year program, then you can apply to my tax in your third year. And if it's your um, yeah yeah and if it's a three year program then you can apply to my tax in second year um so be aware of of the eligibility do check it out they uh, i mean they do tell you what's the eligibility so for this cycle the eligibility is if you're graduating in the um summer of 2024 then you're eligible Uh, just check it out once on the website. Like there are total seven projects. Do I have to select all of them? No, there are like a lot of projects. There are around 200, 500,000 projects. You have to select seven of them. So you have to select seven projects out of all these uh, thousand projects. Now, if you mean that you have option to seven projects, so shall you go for all of them? Yes, why do you want to reduce chances? Apply to as many as projects as possible. How to smartly select our projects? So the first thing I told in the start of this video, if you were not there in the video at the beginning, do check that out. Um, um, you need to you know, smartly select that, the projects, which is very important. Um, another thing that you can do is uh, maybe send connection requests to the professors uh, who hosted those projects on LinkedIn. And in case they connect back to you like with a with note that you are intending to apply to MyTax, and if they connect back to you, that means they are interested in having a conversation, you can have a conversation with them. So that way you increase your chances of selection. So well, I did that and I asked directly uh, whether I'll be a good prospect for the internship. Uh, should I apply? For the, I, I was just, so being straightforward is the best all the time. So I was straightforward that, um, so see, there are just seven projects, right? And I don't want to reduce my chances. So can you tell me if I'm a good um, candidate for your project? Shall I do have chances to you know, um, get into your project? Um, if so, let me know. So that way uh, they replied positive, negative on based on my you know, CV that I attached to that email. And then I was confident that I can apply to these seven uh, projects because the professor already gave me a, red, a, a green flag. Okay, what are some of your tips regarding essays that we need to write? Okay, with, with essays, that you can just write 100 words, right? Not more than that. So what I would suggest is write English, which is effective. That means you're communicating more with lesser words. So make points instead of sentences, because sentences will eat away all the connecting words and, you know, grammar words and all of that, like the and all of that. Instead, you can directly make bullet points, which are straightforward. For, for example, was selected for this program had completed these many papers um, worked with this lab before so that way uh, you can communicate more information in just 100 words um, that's one um, yeah I mean I think that's it uh, with with the essays um, right try to write as much as possible okay Saranj asks um, I have some experience in computer vision. But I want to switch to NLP. Should I apply to NLP project with the little to no project there, but projects and research students? And... Mm. Okay, so you can try it out. I mean, this is an experiment you're conducting, right? Because you have been working in CV and now you want to switch switch to NLP. Uh, so it's kind of an ex uh, experiment that you're doing. Now I'm not sure if you want to experiment with such a big uh, internship platform. <laughs> Um, because it might have little risk because definitely if you have experience in CV, then there are more chances of you getting into CV. But if you're interested in NLP as well, so maybe you can, you know, balance the projects out, apply to say four projects in CV and three in NLP. I hope that helps. I mean, that's literally, uh, finally, it's your own call, right? I cannot tell you whether to apply to CV or NLP. Are interviews are mandatory? Yes, interviews. Um, I mean, uh, some people who have exceptionally good profile 
get selected for interview uh, get selected for the program without an interview um but i think 98% of the ch- times you will be called for interview and that's yes that's mandatory is there an interview for all the seven projects um not necessarily so the projects now my dad doesn't tell how many uh, professors they send your uh, cv application to because they want to get most of the students selected so they balance the projects around so that you know one student just gets selected for one project uh, that's one second if you are getting um, uh, then even if you, the application is going to all the seven professors the all the seven professors might not call you for interview right now it's also up to them whether to call you for interview maybe they see your application and they're not interested maybe they see your application and they're okay without even an interview so uh, you may or may not receive a call for all the seven projects but it's it's rare someone has received a call for all the seven projects uh, you all you only receive like for three or four of them or less so what are some essays university of what are some s easy universities to apply to the projects i can state that <laughs> i mean um i would say the universities that are well ranked like university of british columbia university of toronto university of uh, mcgill university or university of waterloo um or alberta are some ambitious universities and a lot of application goes to them um but i think all the universities are good so uh, i wouldn't say it might be a little difficult to apply to the universities i had stated uh, rather than the others do we get any fund in advance before our departure i mean for applying for visa and both like mm, actually no you, you don't get because uh, they need your ca- canadian sin number like the taxation number and the canadian bank account which you only get when you arrive in canada so you don't get any funds in advance before departure but if you are booking flights and if you are going for visa um once you land in canada they will immediately in like uh, as soon as you provide your banking details they'll transfer the fund in like around 7 days in a week or so uh, so they do reimburse you um nothing in advance you might receive in advance like um, so the program in india is partnered with aicte all india institute of center for technical education um and sometimes maybe it, this happened last last year that they did transfer like a partial fund um why aict to the students uh, before departure but that might happen might not happen i cannot state that I cannot prom- promise you that do we need lor in same research topics for projects which we are planning to mm, preferably yes even if not that's fine the lor should talk more about uh, who how you are as a student um as a lab student um, you know as a researcher um it, it's it's fine like a general uh, generally how you are about, uh, as a student how do you work how passionate you are and so on it, it's fine if it doesn't you know have a talk about the same domain of research but if it does it would be better how to impress the professor um don't lie on your cv or in your interview um be confident you know have a clear conversation conversation is important so if you don't have good conversation skills um then that might be a red flag because then they know that you won't be able to you know properly converse with them throughout the three months of the internship and that way it will be difficult so um conversation is important first uh second talk about your skills uh try to align with your past projects the thing that you're applying to and um the the future that you foresee i mean how do how does this internship benefit you for the future what do you want to do uh, talk about all of that make a connection like a heart to heart connection with the professor and i think that should work so with me uh, the project that i was selected to i had the interview with the professor and the professor was from quebec so it's the an university de laval which is the french university um so the pro- and and the professor could barely speak english properly so um i had to go slow i had to explain pro- like slowly very um like need to read read stuff a lot of time um and i did make it work and the professor was impressed by my skills on how i'm making him understand even though we had a language barrier but i did make it work so i think that was uh, impressive on my end should we keep a one page cv 
you don't necessarily have to that's what i said right academic cv can be don't have page limit so if you uh, try put all the content that you have in and don't care about the pa- pages if you just have a one page cv and you don't think you can extend it um that's fine my college comes under sici which is shastri indo some canadian institution and the qual qualification criteria is uh, 7 cg in that case i have a cg just over 7 so will that no um so if if you are eligible then you are well and good um once you are eligible uh, your application speaks for you more uh, than the cg so the cg is generally used just for screening unless you apply to a project which has a lot of students applying to it and then this, they have to use again cg to filter the students out uh, otherwise your application should, should speak for yourself don't worry about you know cg if you are eligible no it's a four year program so if it's a four year program then i'm sorry uh, please check out the eligibility i think you might not be eligible to apply this year uh, you might be eligible to apply next year hey shubham that's my friend shubham from my hometown hi i have only my result for three semester my fourth semester is hit on is it okay to submit it i think it should be okay to submit three semester um, results uh, and submit four semester fourth semester result as as you as soon as you get it maybe you can ask my tax if you can update it on the portal or something uh, because they are aware that due to covid things are running late uh, the semester started late last year and you know the things are not on that, their timeline so they are aware of that and they'll be uh, able to accommodate it hey vedan so that's the other vedan <laughs> also my friend so from my hometown so hi how are you doing is it allowed to contact professor it's not allowed i mean my tax does uh, say do not contact professor <laughs> Uh, i would say not allowed and i won't comment any more about it <laughs> what do you suggest to keep in mind while selecting universities with respect to the ranking to high ranks three moderate safe choice to safe choice so i wanted to go risk free so my first preference was a university which was not that good ranked but was something a project that i liked and i went for it because even your ranking matters what if this idea project only the only to the pro, only to the first few projects that you applied to and now you have added a uh, two high ranked university uh, on the top and in, now your application only goes to the two hang, high ra- highly ranked university and then you are reducing your application uh, chances of getting selected very, very drastically so what because we don't know how my tax works we don't know how many professors your uh, pro- application goes to or what's the order so uh, that's why i applied to a project of my interest irrespective of thinking about the university um so my university the place i applied was in the great university it was a french speaking university so anyways it was it had a lesser audience applying to it because of you know french um and uh, yeah and that's what i ranked as first so we don't know about the algorithm of selection so i cannot state about how the thing should be i did tell you how i did hey bro can i submit three or four lor as i've done four to research is there an option to submit those many lor if you can um, maybe go for it or maybe you can merge them together and submit it um i think i don't think it should be a problem what's the impact of industrial lor versus research lor i think research lor will be of more impact uh, if you don't have a research lor then even industrial lor can work I've experienced in software development. I've worked a little on ML. Can I keep ML projects in this platform? If you worked on ML, if you can, you know, uh, justify that you can be a good prospect for a ML based project, then yes, you can go for that. Of course. How many calls did you receive? I think around three or four. So you not you may not necessarily receive interview calls. So what some professors like to do is just send you an an assignment instead of interview. uh because they have a lot of people applying to it so they will say, say 30 of them so they'll send uh, assignment to all 30 of them and you need to complete the assignment and get back to them uh so even that happened with me so i think i received interview call for three of them and assignment for one of them so total four and, and didn't receive anything from two of them what if i don't have any research experience what am i saying so there were, there are a lot of people each year who don't have any research experience as say uh but are still getting selected i think selection would uh, people with research experience would be more preferred 
but even without since there are not a lot of undergraduates with the research experience uh, even those who don't have research experience have a good chances is dela university difficult to get in or it's average i won't be able to comment about any university um sorry about that which field will have more competition competitive into 2023 competition you mean um so so usually there are a lot of people applying so it also depends on domain because my tax internship vary from um you know all the fields of sciences all the faculties there's technology there's applied sciences there are there are engineering and so on um so um, i am not sure but i think technology there since there are a lot of people who are applying who are in computer science and apply to this place so i think uh, that computer science and particularly machine learning would be uh, very competitive and that's that's my guess yeah. i cannot i mean uh, you don't have to trust me on this one i might be wrong is it guaranteed that i'll get selected if i'm called for interview no definitely not um a lot of people get rejected after the interview interview is just a screening i mean second level of screening but uh, yeah a lot, a lot of people get uh, like rejected after interview so it, it doesn't guarantee your selection does the professor see the lower just the my tax people see the professor sees your whole application everything i mean they might even search about your uh, you on linkedin and your socials to see how what kind of person you are so yeah everything can you explain about internship funding like when and how they deposit in our account all right so um so the first version of your internship funding should get to you for your flights and visa once you land in canada and provide your bank account and a social uh, insurance number um once that is done they'll send you um weekly or bimonthly stipend for your accommodation and food um and that is more than enough for you to live and eat in canada and uh, i mean a lot of time people save amount out of it and get back to uh, get back to in, uh, their home country with uh, the saved amount so uh, yeah, that's how it works can we state that we would want to move to canada for a masters as well yeah you can state that that the um, the the internship aligns with my long term aspirations of um, going for grad studies in canada in the same field and would be a great benefit to me something like that how do i improve chances of getting selected if i'm not from iit and iit um should not matter um so canadians not don't necessarily know about iits or nit they do, they just know that india exists and there are colleges in india um so i, I mean not necessarily iit and so nit and chance uh, have a like have a preference um if some professor might know about it and they might filter it out otherwise it should be good so your application speaks for you your not your college so your skills your applications your you know lor everything speaks for you not your college how can you share your application can you share your application can you share can you share your application i'm very bad at writing the 100 word essay and need examples sorry i won't be able to share my application also i don't think i have my application on me i kept it i mean It, it's lost right because i applied to my tax uh, two years back i don't have my application on me and also i cannot share i would like you to explore by your own write something by your own if your english is not good get in touch with your maybe uh, the english uh, teachers in the colleges in the school uh, ask them for guidance ask them to you know edit your essays and so on so yeah Will it affect your chances if if you haven't done any internship before? Might the people with internship might be preferred, but doesn't mean that people without internship experience doesn't get selected. There are a lot of people who get selected without any experience that I've seen throughout the last two cycles of my tax. So um, don't discourage yourself. I mean, uh, if you don't have uh, internship experience. do we get to use my tax stipend after saving it after the internship yeah i mean if you save so what happens is um for example um i am vedant right and i go to uh, university of toronto and you are prathamesh you go to say university of waterloo and toronto is in toronto 
uh, in the city, in the downtown. And Waterloo is in the suburbs, uh, away from city. That's a village. Uh, so definitely the expenses for me would be more and expenses for you would be less. But my tax gives the same amount on the higher end, like the city amount to everyone. So people who stay, say, countryside, save amount. And yes, they can. It, the amount remains in their Canadian bank account. So uh, that's always with you. So you, if you come back for grad studies, maybe you can use it then. Or if you don't plan on coming back, you can transfer it to your Indian bank account and use it if you, in case you save it. I mean, that should not be your uh, focus here. But yeah, that's what happens. Okay, um, continuation of some question and can stating that we wanted to go to Canada for master decrease our chances. No, in fact, if you tell them that you want to go to, you, you want to come to master's to in, in Canada, that will increase your chances because now the professor has possibility of working with you for a longer time. So if you're, if they're investing in you because they are funding you, so they would want to get more out of you. So if, you know, if you say that you want, maybe you want to uh, go there for grad studies, that might increase your chances because the professor now has to only train you once and can uh, work with you for more like two to three years. So that increases your chances, not decrease your chances. I'm a five-year undergrad. I'm in third year, I'm allowed to apply. Um, if you're in your third year, you apply now and when you're not, um, explore the eligibility on the platform. I don't think you are allowed. Sorry about that. The portal states that alumni must be from a professor. So I guess industrial or not. Oh, see, the first thing, thank you, Saranj. So the first thing everyone should do is explore the website properly. Let me be blunt and brutal here. If you don't know about the program, don't expect your chances of getting selected into it. Explore the eligib eligibility properly. Uh, explore what are the program requirements, how does that work, what's the application requirement. Everything is written on the website very clearly. So explore that first and then apply to it. Otherwise, if you're blindly you know, hitting somewhere, you won't get bullseye. It will be it will be is it disastrous. So thank you, Saranj, for pointing it out. How did you choose your project? Whatever you, whenever you first time apply. Oh, you can apply only once. So there's no first time or last time. There's just one time. What did you think? Um, I did tell that in the uh, video earlier. So if I think you're joining late, but I'll just quickly iterate. I went for universities. Uh, I went for project that was of my interest, irrespective of universities. So if you are going for top universities, you're decreasing the chances of getting accepted because a lot of people apply to it. So there are more people applying to it for just limited positions. So you're reducing your chances. So I went for a um, university which was not very popular, but was hosting a project that was of my interest. I liked the description of the project. I liked the task and so on. So I went for that. I hope that helps if you want to get more details of it, go watch the whole video and that might help. Are the assignments tough? It can be a little, but then since you're getting it an email, you have like internet to use, you know, you can properly research about it again, read few things and then do it, take help of someone and that's all fine. I've completed my TS diploma in computer engineering and my 10th and I'm direct second year engineering students. So it's okay to give my mark sheet of third. So if you are, I've completed my three years diploma. In so what, okay, got it. You're in your third year and going to fourth year. Yeah, you can apply to, you should submit your uh, diploma mark sheets and third, sem third uh, one, first, second, third, fourth, like all the mark sheets, diploma and all the engineering mark sheets. Can a second year student apply for my tax? Uh, if it's a third year program, three year program, then you, yes, you can apply to my tax in your second year. Um, otherwise, no, explore the eligibility uh, before believing me, explore the eligibility on the website, please. I mean, if, in case you're eligible and if, I soon, if, I, if I'm saying no, don't hold me responsible for that, don't blame me. So explore the eligibility yourself on the website. It is very clearly stated. Is it okay to take some paras from MyTax alumni? It's in playground check, right? I would not want you to copy anything from anywhere, write something by your own. Um, they want to know you, not 
the mitex alumni so uh, write something by your own um, most of the time people are able to um, understand whether something is plagiarized or not i was selected for online internship at isr and i received an official email as well however due to technical issue the online internship was con- wasn't conducted can i mention it my cv mm. you can see you, you not like in experience but somewhere in the others or extra section you can see you were selected for it i guess so what's the better to apply under assistant professor or associate professor mm, i think it doesn't matter a lot not related to mics but you can make a video about how you get into ubc the preparation is required exam tickets i do have a video on this like a smaller one um, but yes i'll make a detailed maybe i can host a live session on um, grad schools and masters the exams the application process the scholarships and everything sure i can do that uh, maybe whenever i get time dhruv so that's my another friend hi dhruv I- i'm doing good how about you you're pursuing thesis with master course based my name is thesis based how to find university ranking you can find i can't find one single list where all the universities mention Mm okay I think QS world ranking is a good ranking list so you can just search for QS world ranking universities hello I didn't have any separate section for my interest and goals in my resume and also I didn't include any of my social media user data no social media is fine I mean you should you should include LinkedIn um and GitHub in case you are on you are into tech um I mean and about the CV it is good as much as you write i mean the more the merrier so uh, i mean if you still haven't submitted your application you can i did it i guess otherwise that otherwise it's fine don't you know don't feel bad about it be confident should i keep hyperlink in my resume yeah that's i did it, it too so yeah i think that should work i'm direct second year engineering so Okay, I did answer this question before. Should I apply it to Indian professors? Is gonna help me? No, I mean that. I think I don't think that matters. Can we apply for projects which are in two different domains, like web dev and ML? As we have to make same resume for both domains. Mm, be smart about it, right? Be smart about it to make a resume which speaks about the both both the domains. And if you're interested in both, yeah, go for it. Apply for both the things. Okay, I think this is the last question. If you have more question, please put in the chat. Would you mind having a quick look at my profile and suggest some things? Uh, sorry, Yusuf. If if I show you my um, LinkedIn connection request for my tax right now, like the little messages about can you help me for my tax, it's seven hundred thirty two, seven thirty two LinkedIn request for people for me to help people for my tax. So it's really not possible. um i can so that's why this live stream so that i can help more and more people um i hope you understand should i keep a bar about myself in the resume as well yeah you can have a about me section or an or an intro section how are you managing the fund for your master's course okay. um so So the University of British Columbia was very kind enough to give me a full scholarship that covers my tuition, covers my uh, meal, accommodation, and my stay in Canada. So everything is sponsored by the UBC, uh, other than the MyTax um, scholarship that that I'm getting. So that's extra. Um, so that's how I'm managing it. I mean, the fifteen thousand CAD is um, will be helpful for me, but it's kind of um, beyond the ubc scholarship that i'm getting once the answers of selection please share tips um so i did already share the tips uh, in the video earlier so you can go back to the you know the first part of video and check it out uh, i don't think i have any more tips other than that yeah and make some video okay please make some videos or conduct a qa yeah sure i'll, I'll conduct live qa for my uh, masters in canada can you like accept at least a linkedin recognition request we are on live we are all here in live uh, first thing your name says all time viral videos 
is that your name on linkedin <laughs> and second thing um there's 700 internal uh, request and it it will it, it will take 700 taps for me to accept those and they just keep coming so i do accept so this is a tip for everyone on linkedin if you are looking forward to connect with someone do include a short note right it linkedin provides you a feature to include a short note i generally accept the request which have those notes because i know that a person if they are writing something before sending it to me they did put some efforts they are passionate about it and those who are randomly sending it it doesn't stand out it just goes in sometimes i don't realize the request is in so this is for everyone i mean all the people who are into tech who are doing great or anywhere in the world just imagine what their condition is right they must be receiving a lot of messages and request so include the short note and value their time value their efforts can you share some of your experience and what exactly do you have to work in the internship like do you have to physically attend the university really or do you have to get some deadline to complete the task you don't have to attend the university if you mean classes no you don't have to attend classes um yes you have to go to your lab and work um 20 uh, 40 hours a week uh, distributed across 8 hours per day for 5 days um the professor might be flexible enough to you know let you work partially from home and partially from the university and yes you have deadlines so you have weekly goals you have meetings with the professor it varies from each professor professor for me i did have like weekly meetings and weekly goals to complete uh, but my professor was very kind and very generous about uh, you know everything he was helping me helping me around all the stuff all the difficulties um even if i didn't complete something uh, on deadline due to i i did try so he could see that i, w- I was putting efforts and um not not doing th- anything um and so that person was very helpful to me and you know made me understand how to do things and uh, eventually we did complete the project how did you get the scholarship how to get the scholarship work? so uh, my program is a thesis based masters program and at uvc all the thesis based masters program at least for computer science are fully funded um so the the uh, the acceptance rate itself is less like the uh, acceptance rate for our program this year was around 3% 0.3% um just four students from india this year um so yeah the acceptance rate is a little less uh, but it's a full so everyone who gets in uh, gets a full scholarship i ain't got so much research experience that's fine is prior research experience needed for my to so consider candidate who didn't have either um i will repeat it this was asked even earlier so if you do check out the whole video but people with research experience will be preferred but if you don't have one don't worry about it because i've seen with last two cycles that a lot of people were selected even without experience can i write my application in french and choose project in english and french mm if if you write in your application in french yes you can select projects in which says just french or which says english and french but i think you won't it won't be wise to select project which says english only because maybe the person won't be able to understand if the person says english only maybe the person doesn't speak french and won't be able to understand so if you're writing a you're writing application then maybe you can write in french for the projects that are that has french as language i'm better on So if there are web developer ba- web developing based project in my tax and you can apply to it and show your web development experience i think that would be my answer if you yourself know that it's not a research ex- a research field so just making you aware that you're applying to a research program i mean i think you have your answers i've researched paper in peer review and research experience of 2 years i'm researching on topic with national level certificate how is my chances are i cannot state anyone's chances the application process is very random and a big mystery uh, sometimes um, very ambitious people get in sometimes even very ambitious people don't get in so i cannot really state your chances but yes those are some good things one would like to see on the application 
do they provide laptop for us to work on? Mm, so you have lab, uh, you have a computer in the lab. Um, I think uh, that should work. So you have all the lab equipments, all that you need, like internet, supercomputer, computer in the lab. I did have one. How much minimum LOR should be? How much minimum? Do you mean how many words? Uh, if you mean that, maybe it should be um, one A4 page, 11 times in a Roman, like standard format. Uh, if you mean how many LORs, then I think you should explore the application. It does say how many LORs. One thing I'd like to know is, do they make us, you learn things or just assign tasks since we're not expert? Yeah, they're aware that you are undergrads and might not be expert into things. If, but you should partially know the subject. Maybe you can you know something and then you learn something and do it. But if you're all blank, that might be difficult for you to get selected, right? Can we mention our patent in the application? Yeah, sure. It's a research thingy, so you can. It should be of uh, help. Do I also need to publish 15 research paper to get into UBC? <laughs> yeah, so I do have 15 research experience, uh, research papers, but people who are selected with me uh, don't necessarily have any research papers. So I know friends of mine from India who got into the same program, my like, colleagues, and they don't have research, any, research in any research paper. They do have experience in their subjects of interest, and they don't have any research experience as such. Um, so... I wouldn't say yes to this question. I did have it. And I think for my application, it did stand as a great advantage. Should we apply for English and French with no French experience? Um, so, so there's three types of project. One is only English, one is only French, and the, one, uh, the third one is English and French. So if you don't know French, then you can apply to English and English and French for courses, and not only French courses, and vice versa. Do you need to keep projects? Yeah, in your resume, everything that you got about your project experience, awards, things you did, part, uh, talks that you were part of, everything. How important is LOR? Very, very important. I mean, um, in fact, for grad studies, when we you know apply for masters, LOR are the top. It's more important than your CV. It's more important than your CGPA. It's more important than your experience or research paper. LOR is the the most important thing when it comes to grad school i think the same applies to my tax as well should i keep talking about certain topics go back to the video uh, i did talk about this already so i won't be repeating how strict are they regarding our cgpa so if your cgpa is above the eligibility then you're good to go if it is not, then you're not even eligible to apply. You'll get rejected in the first uh, first phase itself. We just need to sign up prof right on LOR. I haven't got that. I don't understand what it means. So for me, I asked my LOR professor to write the LOR. The professor wrote it, gave her it on my on the college letterhead, and I just uploaded it. What do you mean that you don't you just have to need to sign off your professor? Do you mean just signing on a blank page or something? I don't understand it, but yes, you need to sign and sign and stamp on the letter the professor writes. Do we get this type and for going and as I heard from another channel? The process is different. We take the flights to go there and then the flights. I think that's what even I heard. That's how it works. Um, you book the flights and visa by your own, and once you get to Canada, they remember you. Can you tell how was your interview experience? Uh, very normal. I mean, just the way I'm conversing right now in this video, that's how I did talk. Um, I was like, hi, doctor. Let, let's let's not talk about, let's not reveal the names. Let's say Martin. Hi, Dr. Martin. How are you doing? Um, I'm really excited for this internship. So let's let's get started with the interview. And then they asked me about my introduction. I was like, yeah, I'm Vedant. I'm a junior student from um, India. Uh, I've been studying bachelor's technology and information technology and I've been working on machine learning for quite a while and that's that's what we do here to apply to this program and I think um, your project has been interesting your work has been interesting and I'm, I'm, I'm interested into it so, yeah. so that's how it, I mean it's normally I just converge right that's how it should be 
should I upload my diploma transcript along with my undergraduate second year transcript? Yeah, just um, merge your diploma and undergraduate transcripts together. Or maybe on the first page, you can write a small paragraph of a transcripts, like a, uh, give heading transcripts and write um, that you did you know, uh, a diploma and then um, and transfer to in engineering, right? right? And uh, this, like, this document includes both the transcripts. Um, uh, and so on. So, and give index that diploma transcript page one to two, uh, engineering transcript page three to four, something like that. And you can merge it all together. I have did two software engineering internships, zero experience. What is the probability of getting selected? I cannot state anyone's probability of getting selected. It's a mystery. Um, but if you have experience, it should be good. If we haven't done an internship prior, how can we boost our application with the rest? Do personal projects. Add personal projects to your application. Talk about it. So internships, internship is about people working on some projects. And personal project is also about people working on some projects. So um, add personal projects and talk about it in your application. Who are those friends which got selected to UBC without us? Oh, no, I want to connect. I cannot reveal the name of this live in, unless I have permission from them. So maybe... First thing, please change your name uh, on YouTube, right? Any platform you're on, people will be able to know who you are. Now, if you would have your name here, I could have, you know, connected you on LinkedIn and would have sent you the names of those people. But as of now, you don't. Please explain what will the professor exp ex expect us in the interview. Um, the professor would ex wouldn't expect anything from you. Uh, it would be a general interview, would want to interact and know how you are. Uh, yes, you should have good communication skills. You should talk about your project part properly. The skills you have should align with your project and you should, your, your words that you speak out, speak out should match with your application. Um, I think that's about it. Mm, even science should work, but if it is time better, Yeah, I mentioned data as well. Hey, Siddharth. That's my other friend, Siddharth from Gujarat. He's a big man, like, you know, um, always traveling across the world and uh, people love him. And he has got like how many, some 20,000 followers or something. So hey, Siddharth, glad to be friends with you. Should I mention at the end of my three years transcript that my fourth sem transcript is yet to come or just submit three of them? Mm, yeah, maybe you can mention that. Yeah, it's up to you. Thank you for clearing my doubts. Thank you, Prathamesh, for being on the live. I hope it helps and uh, good luck for your selection. Uh, looking forward to see you in Canada. And if you get selected, please do let me know. I would be so proud of you and would be happy to know that you're getting selected. And uh, in case you're around Vancouver or British Columbia, do meet me. Right? Can I upload my last some great card as transcript? Yeah, I mean, with me, I didn't really get a transcript. I just merged all the grade cards of all the semester and uploaded it. So yeah, that's true. Um, ongoing personal projects? Yes, go for it. That should work. Thank you for the guidance, man. Really appreciate it. Always there. Happy to help. Good luck for your application. My next project, you mentioned your LinkedIn is also there in this year's project, okay? In the same universe. So, are there projects with same title, same but some more research involved? So a single research project uh, goes on for around four to five years. There's a lot of work. There are different phases of the project. So that's why the MyTax project is that I worked on was there in my cycle, was also there in the current cycle, and is also there in the next cycle that you're applying to. Um, so that can be the same with all the different projects. Right. And if you do get selected for my project, you will be you know, using my code um, that I already wrote. So it will be interesting. I heard my tech selection is based on luck. Is it true? Um, not necessarily. So there, there are always luck factor involved everywhere. Every second. Uh, but not necessarily. You have a lot of other things. Your project speaks, your profile speaks. Um, people who don't get selected. Uh, would like to, you know, think that they were unlucky and that's the only thing that got them un not selected or rejected. Uh, and that's that's a good thing to think about, right? Just do not feel bad. 
um but those who get selected if you see their application they did deserve it i mean they did do great work and they did deserve uh, going to canada for the fully funded internship and we connect on linkedin if you did send me a request with a note then probably i already accepted your request um if not it will be really difficult for me um okay let's see mm -hmm. no i don't i don't see your request sorry are we supposed to apply for only project based on college majors or should we apply to other niche based interest you can apply to you know anything other than your majors as well as long as you can justify that in your application i mean the question would be why what do i do you, why do you want to apply to uh, a project other than your majors maybe you can write all of this in your cv in the interest section and uh, the second would be do you have prior experience in the field that you're applying to uh and how does that align with your long term aspirations so these three questions if you answer them properly probably yes you can apply to other niches um, other than your majors uh thank you aditi for jumping into this video and good luck for your my tech internship i hope it helps what's your take on lor is one decent lor from college professor of sure should be scout more um fulfill the eligibility anything beyond the eligibility um is just fine um might help you a little but don't put like 10 or lors or something i think going to do background check of all the projects we mentioned the application cv um they might ask you about it in the uh, interview other than that if you did do see, for example for tech if we do mention something we did um we usually have like the code base uh or the work uploaded on linkedin or a paper written for it or an article written for it that what are the results and everything and that kind of helps uh them understand that i did do the project if you are making your project sections in the cv in such a way that they're not able to understand whether you did the project or not they might just you know see the project as a decent thing um might not be of a, of a great significance because they're not able to see what you did exactly so all the grade cards from the first sem to fifth sem in the document as a transcript or have to organize them in a different way yeah from all, all the grades card grade card from first to to the recent sem you can just club them together and um, you can club them together and upload it that should work Oh, competitive for quantum computing project in my my tax my tax. Um, I don't think competitive quantum project um uh, computing project receive a lot of application, but um, but there are not a lot of projects either. So you know, in a way, it balances out. So domains that are popular have more projects and more students. Domains which are not popular have. lesser projects and lesser students so in a way the selection rate balances out what is the better opportunity for research point of view my tax dad oist mm, everything is good depends upon your long term aspiration like people who like canada like canadian universities would want to want, want to come to canada people who like germany would like to want to go to dad also depends on eligibility because a lot of people don't have their college name listed in my tax uh, or either way a lot of people don't have their college name listed in dad and they cannot apply to some of them so also works, uh, depends on eligibility i think oist is for japan so if you want to go to japan um, that's the one for you um now not because i did my tax or i am in canada but uh, i have heard a general saying that my tax is the best program uh for research uh, undergraduate research internships um but yeah you may choose not to believe me because i might be biased because i am a my tax intern my tax ambassador and also in canada again 
would they be expecting no so it doesn't matter who the lwr comes from what matters is whether that person has worked with you properly or not not their positions so the person should be able to speak properly about you for example not just general statement that um shank is a good student uh, i've worked with shank and he's determined passionate all of that those are just some generic statements every lor will have uh, the person should be able to justify why why you are passionate why you are deserving maybe you know some way they can share experience working with you and tell for example my lor had a line which said um i worked with vedant um and uh, and working with vedant was the um, vedant was the best research student i had um in last few years of my career that's what my professor wrote for me um he was able to grasp really quickly and was able to uh, work on the project at the same time help other research lab members um cope up with their project and there was a lot of positive vibe uh, environment that vidant created in the lab uh, which was uh, very different and was first time seen our lab and we were highly advantaged uh, highly benefited with his presence uh, in the lab and i think the same would be the case if he is getting selected to mitex i hope um, he creates uh, I, i believe he'll create the same kind of positive experience in your lab uh, and i think he deserves a great chance something like that so you know did you just hear the last paragraph it was great i mean wow i love my professor for writing that um, so yeah uh, if your professor writes something more than generic other than generic something which is which which talks about you which talks about you as a person uh, that should be of great help what about the visa expiry mm. so you get i think a 10 year visa that's what i heard so the visa is an expire for 10 year although you can only stay uh, in canada for 6 months at a time and uh, uh, can do in work as part of the internship only for 3 months so um be aware of that and um, and also maybe check information on the website i cannot the, everything that i speak here is up to my knowledge and i cannot guarantee its truthfulness um this might have changed uh, so uh, don't hold me responsible if uh, so that's just a disclaimer don't hold me responsible if it's wrong sorry i have joined the live from my other gmail rohan here i have sent you connection request on linkedin with the note just now accept it please thank you I, I, i'll do it sure um are all my text projects of 12 week duration is it something you work upon with your professor from matchay all my text at 12 weeks formally some professors like to you know send some application materials and do some pre work before the internship that's up to the professor uh, that didn't happen with me it happened with one of my friend you don't get paid for that work because that's an extra thing you're doing um i was lucky enough that i wasn't made my professor was great he was like you deserve uh, i mean just work for the time you deserve the time you're getting paid for um you don't have to work extra uh, unpaid work like you don't have to do extra unpaid work that's fine and my professor i, I was really lucky to have my professor so yeah no no uh, not all the applicants are called for interview um yeah no not all applicants are called for interview uh, the professor will see your applications and if they find it good will call for interview otherwise not is it compulsory to get the transcript or can we submit uh, you can submit your for grade cards not necessarily to not get the transcripts how competitive a web app is project I can't state and there are a lot of people i think uh, these are not direct research projects so there might be lesser projects in this platform i think uh, then lesser professor who just wants to pay you no pay someone to come to canada just to do a web app development because there are a lot of web app developers here in canada <laughs> can we be considered about branches in comparison or not does the branch matter mm, i think it matters a little but again the branches that are popular or have you know um, more projects have more students coming in so kind of kind of the acceptance rate balances out so you don't have to necessarily be concerned about the branches that's what i think um if you are in a tech and if you're applying for a tech based uh, internship and if you think your project involves coding because it not necessarily might involve coding for example um 
for example, for example, with with UX or UX user experience research, um, there might not be a lot of coding involved. So it depends on the project that you're applying to. Is it necessary to write projects on LOR? I mean, if your professor writes about the project, well and good, because that speaks about you and your professor's connection instead of just generic statement that everyone else would write. What, why did you choose Canada over that or other research opportunities? Like you would shed light on your experience. So personally, I believe Canada is the best. Uh, I don't like um, the, the European countries are also good, but uh, I would not want to learn new language. Um, that's a little uncomfortable for me to learn German uh, because Germany is where like a place where English is very less spoken. Um, so I would, uh, and Canada was like English speaking country. So I would want to go there. It's a great place. It's a great environment. There are great universities here, like top universities of the world. For example, UBC for uh, the per se where I'm right now is in top 25 for computer science. Um, so in the, in the world, so I'm studying at a great university and that's why Canada. When they let us know whether we are selected for interview, um, it's around November, I guess, first or second week of November. What about the accommodation that was the application selected? So you do get time for accommodation, but you need to find the accommodation by your own. So there's some some apps like Facebook Marketplace or KGG. Usually uh, what happens is selected interns make some group um, and you know hunt for the place uh, together. Uh, so you need to uh, do that. Maybe ha have someone in Canada who can help you with that. Um, yeah, that's how it works. No coding is not required. I've seen with law and finances from India. Okay. Is it all possible? Is it possible that my professor will want me to pursue masters there? Um. Yeah, there is a high chance that uh, if you work good, if your application is good, the professor would want to pursue, want you to pursue masters there, and you might have uh, you know special uh, funding. So I've seen this with my tax internship. People who do my tax internship are generally provided with special funding for the grad studies a lot of times. What do we write in skills background experience? Well, skills background experience. Um, what are your skills? Um, talk, be significant and related to the project that you applied to. So maybe you have some software skills, you have some communication skills, some soft skills you can talk about in the background, and what internships that you do, did, and the experience similarly uh, with, with projects and internships. And you can, uh, as I said, you can, instead of not writing sentences, you can list them. Um, that way uh, you can write, you can provide more information in just 100 words. Um, writing sentences will eat away a lot of space. Yeah, IT and CS are so same. Like I am from bachelors of, uh, bachelors of engineering in IT from India, not CS. Extreme thank you for amazing help. Of course, Subodeep. Um, good luck for your internship and I hope to see you in Canada. Do let me know if you get selected. Would you ever in future want to move to USA? Everyone mad over USA and unis and tech exposure. Uh, no, I don't know why. It's a, it's, I think it's a rat race that everyone wants to move to US. US has a lot, lot of gun crimes, a very bad healthcare system. Uh, a lot of violence, racism, everything. I would not want to move to US ever. I love Canada. Canada has got, got a lot of great people, very less crime, very nice healthcare system, very nice education system, very nice taxation system, free education, free healthcare, um, uh, great value for people. Uh, I mean, here people are all the time, thank you and sorry about even mistakes that I do. They, so, they say sorry for uh, about me. They feel sorry for me. So here people are great. I love, I love Canada. Do you know any person whom I can contact regarding master's research based at University of Alberta? If you can guide me, it will be great. Uh, hi, Aryan. So it, see, I mean, University of Alberta is a big university. I don't know what domain you come from. Uh, master's in computer science you're asking for. And if yes, then you can, maybe you can just, you know, uh, check out the website and look for connections. Um, I don't necessarily know anyone, uh, uh, you know, and maybe I might not stand at a position where I can connect to you. Should our CV more research run into industry? Since you're applying for a research-based program, I think you have the answer.
and also data structure topic like BST binary is required for all skills that happen. <sighs> so it depends upon the place you're applying to. So it's a software engineering roles, then probably you don't need um, a lot of uh, knowledge with data structures. If it's a machine learning, NLP, computer vision role, then you need skills and uh, knowledge about that. So it's specific to your area. Okay, that's the end of the questions that I see here. Um, and yeah, I think we completed like one hour, 10 minutes on this uh, video. Do like, share and subscribe. It will be a great help to me because if you, you know, help me with the stats on this YouTube, on this channel, on this video, uh, that helps me make more videos on the channel with my tags. Maybe I can come back, come back in November to talk more about the interviews. Um, other than that, I can talk about uh, how to apply for masters, how to get like a fully funded uh, research-based masters program uh, in in Canada at UBC. Um, so uh, I would be happy to help. Um, but for that, please like, share, and subscribe, and help me support this initiative. Uh, thank you for jumping into this video. I hope you have a great day. Uh, three more ones, like really quick. Okay, let's see. Hi, Gorang. Um, I wanted to ask how's Canada for MS Prospects. It's, it's, I love it. I mean, um, as I told, uh, see, there are four or five universities that people apply, right? Canada, US, Germany, UK, Australia, right? These are the most uh, five universities people apply to. Now remove um, Germany from here because of the language barrier. I do, I do, I just want to, I wanted to go for just English speaking countries. So we are left with Australia, Canada, US, and London, uh, like England. Um, now, with us i hate the um, environment around there i mean it's very capitalistic economy uh, people don't necessarily have a good life there that's what i believe i mean people can debate but that's my uh, belief and that won't change um, so i don't like us at all because of the gun crime racism uh, bad healthcare system and all that uh, with with um with uk it's kind of a little expensive um it's harsh in terms of weather um and I think Canada has better universities than UK. I mean, UK has like Oxford and uh, Nottingham or King's College. But uh, in terms of computer science, UK is great for if you are into economics, if you're into, you know, finances. Uh, I think with computer science perspective, Canada is a great place. Uh, Canada is the birthplace of machine learning algorithms, of deep learning, of uh, transformer models and everything. So being a machine learning enthusiast, I am at the birthplace of machine learning and I love it here. Um, talking about Australia, it doesn't have those great universities compared to Canada. So overall, I think uh, I like it in Canada in terms of, you know, country to uh, study at. Okay, we got so many questions again. I was thinking of ending the broadcast, but yeah, let's quickly take some of them. Um, although I would be only uh, taking like this video for like next five minutes. So until then, whatever questions I can cover, I will. Speaking about project, would they expect some major unique one or something like Kai did once can be considered? Uh, sorry, I don't understand the question. Um, join the official Discord channel. I am already there in the uh, Discord channel, I, I guess. Uh, but and regardless, I won't be able to, you know, reply to it of uh, because of the time constraints. Maybe if you have question, you can put it down here or maybe um, come back later. Is changing majors for bachelor's to master's a thing in Canada they do in the US? Um, they do as long as you're able to justify why you want to change. I already said, right, uh, why do you want to change? Uh, what will you do? And how does it align with your long-term uh, plans? Okay. All right. Yeah. If you have sent a connection request with a note into it, I'll definitely accept it. Thank you for jumping onto this video. Have a great week ahead. Um, and come back to Canada and do message me once you're in Canada. Uh, I would be happy to help. Good luck with your internship. I'll be really the most proud of you if you get into it. Um, and do let me know. Uh, all right. Um, thanks, Garang. So Garang is my junior from my prior um, college and uh, great guy. Uh, I look forward to see you in Canada. Bye.